Welcome to SSI Meetup. Today we will be talking with Sebastian Weidenbach, who will be doing a presentation about what eSatus is doing in Germany in the SSI world, and Christopher Hempel, who will be joining him and telling us more about some, a demo they will be doing, and he will be also answering any questions if there are any technical questions that come up today. Um, um, Sebastian and Christopher, they will be showing us um, what they're doing um, for bringing um, a credential-based IT application access system into place. And um, I'm really excited to see this and also excited to learn more about what is happening in the SSI space in Germany. And let us quickly review in the next slide um, what we will be talking, um, what SSI Meetup is about. So just for anyone who's joining us for the first time, SSI Meetup is basically to empower global SSI communities and it's open to everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a company, a person anywhere in the world, an association, if you're interested in SSI. This is a place to be. So, that you, and all the content that we produce here is being shared with the Creative Commons by Share Like License, which basically means you can reuse this material in any way you want. You just need to give credit back to the people creating it, which today is Isatos with Sebastian and Christopher, and also Tessa Samida. And then you can download the presentation. You will be able, you will have access to the video, and you will also have access to to slideshare presentation. Um, especially the Google slide decks are really important because you can download these and then hopefully use them in, in your own local communities and, and keep on pushing for SSI uh, where you, wherever you live in the world. There's a lot of people around the world using this, going from Asia, South America, or Europe, anywhere um, that are using this material. We're really happy with that. So I hope you will continue doing that. Um, if you have any questions during this presentation for today's um, webinar, please um, bring them up at the end of the presentation. Um, and Sebastian and Christopher will both be able to answer any questions that you have. And, um, and I'll be sharing those with them. And they will first talk through what is happening a little bit at ESATUS, what they're doing, what they're planning to, to do for SSI, how um, the German ecosystem looks a little bit like. And then at the end of this webinar, we will have a demo from them also. And yeah, so thank you so much, Sebastian and Christopher, for joining us today. And please go ahead, the floor's for you. Okay, um, thank you very much, Alex. Um, so we will get to the next slide. Um, yeah, we would like to welcome you to our SSI Meetup webinar, Bring Your Own Identity Using Safe Sovereign Identity Technology for Credential-Based IT Application Access. Um, I'm sitting next to my colleague, Christopher Hempel, who is the lead blockchain developer um, at Isatos AG. My name is Sebastian Weidenbach. Um, I'm the head of technical consulting and solutions departments at Isatos AG, and I manage our SSI identity and access product self, um, which we would like to present to you today. Um, this um, webinar is a late follow-up on Drummond Reed's SSI Meetup webinar 38, where he talked about the highlights of the Internet Identity Workshop 29 and uh, introduced our solution as one of the live demonstrations that were held on the IIW and um, is focused on um, all SSI enthusiastic people that haven't seen the solution yet. Um, it is uh, great to talk to people that are already um, f um, familiar with um, some of the SSI basics. Uh, so we will skip some of the fundamentals that we would typically explain to raise the understanding of the big picture. Um, the um, webinar itself will take about one hour. Um, in the first half, uh, we will talk about the um, idea behind self and some um, aspects of the solution. And we will continue with a live demonstration in the second half. Um, we um, at Isatos AG um, have about 50 employees. We are located in three locations in Germany, and uh, we are specialized in uh, information security, especially in the topics um, um, identity and access, governance risk and compliance, and um, IT security. In our uh, consulting project, we are mostly working for large companies and regulated industries, such as the uh, financial industry. And um, yeah, we will bring up the next slide. Um, in 2016, um, we became aware of SSI technology through our research on the blockchain and um, followed the development of uh, Sovereign with uh, particular interest. Um, since our background enabled us to foresee the regulatory and technical hurdles very well and therefore found Sovereign's governance framework in particular very convincing, um, as one of the founding stewards, we therefore decided early on to focus entirely on Sovereign. And um, yeah, since we wanted to use our resources to drive the, uh, the success of Sovereign and SSI technology, 
um, it was obvious to build a solution where we could leverage our identity and access expertise. And uh, yeah, with SELF, um, we wanted to give innovative companies the opportunity to use FSI technology um, early on and uh, offer it to their employees without having to turn their um, entire IT upside down. Um, we have uh, decided on the procedure shown here. First of all, replace existing use cases with SSI technology. So uh, just like uh, existing single sign-on solutions um, and um, um, uh, yeah, um, um, replacing existing use cases with SSI yeah? and um, where we would act as an alternative identity provider. And um, uh, afterwards, in the middle, um, it's about connecting subcontractors, public authorities, or other third party sources of trust in order to depict new use cases that uh, require cross border trust and should inspire the users. And um, the final step on the right side um, is to upscale the solution and connect additional sources in order to be able uh, to implement international use cases in a meaningful way. So we can go to the next slide. Um, yeah, we see these um, fundamental opportunities to improve identity and access management for a company. Um, and it's uh, first about uh, fact-based. So um, facts lead directly to authorizations. Um, be it an employee certificate, a project membership, or other attributes that the user can also obtain from third-party sources. And um, it's completely flexible. Um, facts, so um, for example, claims of credentials, uh, can be issued and verified individually and for any possible usage. They rely on a shared namespace that can be persisted as a schema on the distributed ledger and ensures international and interdisciplinary usability. And uh, finally, um, discrete, any information can be revealed per request and use case to perform the declaration of consent um, according to the very important uh, GDPR, especially for the European located uh, companies. And uh, yeah, it ensures um, data minimalization and implements privacy by design and privacy by default. Um, common use cases for identity and access start with uh, credentials that lead to any form of physical or logical access. Um, furthermore, credentials can be used as a primary source for facts, which can be accessed from other applications over REST API. And um, because of the level of trust that the credential brings with it, facts from third party sources like agencies or companies can be considered for access decisions too. And um, finally, in a world that um, every entity is able to issue and to verify SSI credentials, access can be granted uh, across organizational, and um, that means an immense time saving for onboarding of external employees or uh, joint projects. Um, speaking about joint projects, um, we also want to talk about LISI. In um, 2019, last year, the listed partners I will show them. Um, we have one. Uh, worked on LISI. The letter stands for Let's Initiate Self Sovereign Identity to get all participants into the position to have a working Hyperledger Aries compliant wallet app and a working cloud agent to create DID connections and to issue and prove credentials. With that wallet app available, we decided to make Self also Aries compliant so that we can drop our um, already existing proprietary wallet app implementation and to go towards standardization that um, um, hasn't even been available when we started developing self. Um, together with the LISI code base, we included a lot of relevant uh, functionality for um, identity and access purposes, um, together with uh, some comfort and usability enhancements. And um, as some of you might know, we released it as the Azatus wallet app some weeks ago. And uh, LISI itself uh, will also be available shortly. Um, so we can come to the next slide. Um, yeah, coming back to self, um, we focused on two relevant features for uh, identity and access. On the one hand, we want self to be used as the API for credential-based access. 
we call it SSI native implementation. So uh, third party applications, interfaces or plugins can use self um, to authenticate an end user by requesting credentials from him, him and to check for which authorization objects the user is qualified. Um, of course, we knew that especially big companies will not easily update all of their applications to be able to consume SSI native objects. So that uh, on the other hand, um, we are uh, synchronizing entitlements into existing authorization sources. Currently, that is, um, that is LDAP, Active Directory, Azure Active Directory um, with the security groups. Um, then we have SAML assertions and for OpenID Connect and OAuth 2, we have claims that we are synchronizing. And um, besides um, authorization, SELF also acts as an identity provider for authentication. And there we are using SAML, OAuth 2, and uh, OpenID Connect as well. Um, no matter how the connection to SELF is chosen or combined, the translation of the objects into the SSI and sovereign world is uh, completely encapsulated in self that acts in sovereign terms as a cloud agent. Um, technically, self is divided into dockerized um, microservice containers and uh, uses modern technology like Neo4j graph database for persistence and uh, Elasticsearch for logging and the audit trail. Um, we recommend running it on Kubernetes clusters but other setups also on-prem on um, on are supported as well. Yeah. Um, everything you see in the slides um, is no longer work in progress and already available and working in production and together with the um, sovereign mainnet. And um, our employees, our own employees are already using it. Um, yeah, um, on this slide, we have a, a closer look into our credential-based access control rule engine. Um, the rules that are defined in cells include um, claim rules and context rules. Claim rules can be combined and rely on provided claims that the user reveals out of his digital wallet while he is uh, in, um, in the authentication process. The validity of those claims gets proven to verify that the claims come from the defined credential definitions and that they have not been revoked. Combinations of claim rules together with uh, separated and independent issuers can also implement the dual control principle that um, should be pursued for privileged access. Um, on the other hand, the, the uh, context rules can uh, restrict the access to an allowed list of user locations or working times and uh, get checked in addition. Um, after the user shows uh, necessary claims to get authenticated, uh, self prompts him with a list of possible authorization objects that the user could qualify for if he shows additional credentials. Um, he can then decide to show the further credentials with the proof request or to log in immediately if the application knows everything um, that, is, um, that is already available. Um, uh, we will show an example of that negotiation process in the live demo. Um, yeah, to, uh, if a um, rule becomes true um, for a user, uh, the entitlements that are linked to it, and um, those linking is done in cells, um, will be synchronized into the configured authorization sources, like for instance, LDAP. Yeah? So you can decide on an application basis um, which entitlements are linked to the application, and the application then um, has a configured authorization source um, so that uh, self knows um, um, what needs to be synchronized um, for the user to get access. So, the next slide. Um, using self um, is based on credentials as well. So, uh, self uses an uh, access concept with the following roles. Um, first, we have the credential issuer. Um, an issuer signs and revokes credentials. Um, he's ultimately responsible for that issued fact, and so he's expected to also revoke the credential um, as soon as the content gets invalid. Um, it could be someone out of the HR department, a project manager, and so on. The uh, second role is the so-called application owner. Um, he is responsible to manage his IT application 
so as an information owner yeah, within cells, he has to decide uh, which entitlements in this application will be provi um, provisioned for what credentials that the user needs to provide. On a um, larger scope, we have the rule manager, the, the um, third role in that picture. Um, the rule manager is, uh, is able to um, define rules, entitlements, and applications just like an application owner, but across applications, so um, globally speaking. Um, and finally, on the right-hand side, we have the user who owns his credentials and answers proof requests upon request. Yeah, that's all about the um, uh, theory and um, idea behind the uh, solution. And um, now we would like to um, show you a, a short live demonstration of um, how that looks like um, in, in our demo environment. So um, I will shortly bring up all what is needed for that. So on the um, right hand side, you should be able to see um, my smartphone. I will try to, uh, yeah, it's moving. So it seems to be working. And um, on the left hand side, we will um, log in into our uh, sales demo environment. So as you can see here, um, we can log into cells um, with the uh, um, credentials when they scan the QR, uh, QR code below. Um, or, uh, for example, for the first configuration or for fallback reasons, uh, we have also a um, classical login available um, for some kind of admin account. Um, we will use that uh, login um, for the first uh, demonstration so that we have all, um, all access rights to uh, see all of our menu menu items and to um, do everything what is needed that um, is a little easier to um, explain which objects we have inside. So, um, yeah, I will log in now. Yeah, as you can see um, on the dashboard, there are um, already a lot of credentials and um, identities active in that system. And um, yeah, we can begin with the view of the um, um, uh, application owner. So the application owner um, is the person that manages his application. Today, we want to connect a simple uh, Jira application to self. And um, we see that Jira application configured here. And we see that a um, thermal configuration is also attached. Um, when we get into the details, um, we will also see some, um, some more information just um, about the uh, summer consumer URL or um, the certificate that's being used. And here I can um, check um, which uh, authorization sources should uh, synchronize for that application. Um, for um, demonstration purposes here, we uh, checked every box so we can show in every uh, system how the, um, how the entitlements look like there. But um, yeah, in the real world, you would check, for example, LDAP or Active Directory, or you do everything um, over SAML um, and uh, over SAML assertions. Um, that would also be an option. Yeah. Um, for the application, we have um, entitlements configured in cells. We can um, filter for Jira. So we see it's a, a really simple setup. We have our um, the entitlement Jira out. Um, when you have that entitlement, um, you are qualified for authentication, in, uh, authenticating in the application, and um, Jira sales would um, represent an authorization object. So, for example, that the uh, sales manager um, is able to see some more, um, some more areas or projects um, in the Jira application. Um, then the next thing that the um, application owner um, would typically, um, typically need to set up is the rule or more rules. For Jira, we have uh, two rules configured. Um, one rule is the uh, Jira authentication rule. We can go in some more details. So we see, okay, um, if you qualify for that rule, you will get the uh, Jira auth um, entitlement that we um, uh, saw on the screen before. And um, to get these entitlements and to qualify for the rule, you have to show 
um, the list of these uh, claim rules. And um, in that case, it's really simple because it says you need an um, employee ID um, uh, credential and the um, claim um, um, employer Sutase ID must be provided. So when you can provide that, you will get this uh, entitlement and will also be able to um, authenticate in that system. Um, but maybe you are the uh, sales manager, um, as you can see here. So you are not only working in the company, you are in position sales manager. Then um, you will get um, additionally the uh, Jira sales um, authorization object. And we will show that um, when we um, issued a credential to the user soon. Um, okay, so these three menu items, um, as I mentioned, is typically the area for the application owner. And now we get into the area for the um, credential issuer. Uh, the credential issuer, we might think about someone working in the human resources department, um, would um, um, uh, go onto the, um, onto the identities page to onboard um, a new um, um, employee. So the first thing he would do is um, he needs to enter that identity um, in our context. Um, that needs to be done to build the initial uh, DID connection, the pairwise connection between our agent and the um, new employee. Um, we give him a user ID um, to, to um, identify him in our system. So we uh, call it uh, SSI meetup and we um, are uh, sending him that connection invitation to an email address that I will be able to um, look inside in some seconds. Um, so we can create that. And now we will filter for especially that user. And you see we already did some testing today, but that is the user we, are, we um, have entered um, right now. And you can see it's um, in the state um, invited. Um, when we now check um, our mailbox, we see there's a new mail coming from our sales agent. And um, yeah, the user has now two options. Um, if he has opened that mail in his uh, um, web browser or on his PC or laptop, um, he can scan the QR code with his uh, mobile app or if he opens that mail on his smartphone, he can directly click on the um, um, on the um, uh, provider icons um, there um, to directly go into the application. Um, yeah, the user is also able to see the more information in that mail. And uh, yeah, so now um, I take my smartphone and I will um, open the Isatos wallet app. I unlock it with my uh, face ID biometrics and we see it's an empty wallet uh, we have no credentials yet we have no connections yet and um, when we go on into the uh, change ledger settings we're seeing to which ledger we are connected right now and our demonstration um, is taking place um, on the SRTS test ledger so um, the setting is all right um, so now I click on scan and then I scan the QR code and we see the um, SSI Gov uh, GW Aries demo wants to connect with you. So um, yeah, I accept that and we see the connection switches to green. Um, what I can do now, because maybe the um, name um, is not, um, I'm not um, familiar with that agent name and I want to rename it so I can go into into the details here and can say, okay, um, that was my um, SSI meetup connection. Maybe add a um, identity card right here. And you can see also the more configuration options. So uh, for identity and access, um, we are um, frequently asking the user to provide some more credentials. So um, you could want to say, okay, for the connection to my um, employer, um, I want to accept all proof requests automatically. But um, that is the decision of the user. And um, yeah, for now, I will leave that setting just like it is. 
And now we can see on the, connect, uh, on the connections page our SSI meetup connection. Um, when we refresh here on the identity screen, we will also see um, that we have a working connection to that endpoint. Yeah, um, now um, most of you might be familiar with the um, objects um, out of the um, yeah, hyperledger in the world. So uh, here we have uh, schemas and we have the employee ID schema for today. And um, who um, wants to test this um, on his own, we have a, a live demo available, um, which uh, we can share afterwards. And then everyone is able to get a credential for this uh, demo schema. Um, that also, um, yeah, um, here on that page for credential definitions. So um, we have two credential definitions for these two schemas. Uh, we can create new ones um, also with uh, revocation support. And uh, we could also um, import credential definitions, what might be interesting for defining rules on, on third party credential definitions. Um, Oh, I forgot to mention uh, importing schemas is um, of course supported as well because um, you might use uh, want to use an, an existing schema for your for your own credential definitions. And um, what we implemented as well is these uh, credential templates object. So that means um, we define access for um, uh, specific values on a credential definition. So um, in a standard employee ID that um, could be made ac uh, accessible for our HR department um, uh, guy um, looks like this one. So we uh, fixed the um, location. So he can only enter one of these four locations. The uh, user ID will automatically filled in with a set of um, variables we are able to provide. And he can um, define one of these three um, employers um, we have a position list, but he could also enter um, a free text. So if he decides it's a new position that is not in the list right now, um, as well for the department. Yeah? So um, he can enter his own data here. And the email is also taken out of the um, identity um, that we are going to issue that credential to. Um, so yeah, um, that is what we are doing right now. Um, we're now wanting to um, offer a credential to our newly created SSI meetup identity. Um, we select the, the standard employee ID template and we see yeah, for location, um, we can choose between uh, one of these four locations. We set Sutaza AG as the employer. We um, define ourselves as a sales manager so that we will qualify for the sales rule that I showed uh, you. And yeah, for the department, um, yeah, sales department makes sense. So we are going to create this credential. And as you can see on the right-hand side, um, on the mobile app, um, uh, we received a new credential from our agent. Um, I can view that offer and I will be able to see um, what the um, agent offers to me, I can accept this. And um, yeah, now it's, um, it's asking me as well um, if I uh, want to activate auto accept for incoming credentials for that uh, connection, um, or um, if I'm not sure, uh, sure to do that now, or if I want to keep the setting as is. And that is what we are going to do right now. Um, it's says it's successfully stored. So on the credentials page here, we can see um, all of the content that uh, had, um, has been issued. And um, when we filter for that user, SSI meetup and refresh, we should also be seeing, yeah, we see that it um, has been issued and is usable right now. Yeah. So um, yeah, that is everything that the um, HR department employee needs to do. And now the um, yeah, newly onboarded employee um, maybe wants to access the uh, Jira application. He clicks on 
his Jira link and he will uh, be redirected over SAML to our authentication service. Um, I'm clicking on scan on my smartphone to get that QR code that is listed here. And right afterwards, the application requests the necessary information. Oh, I clicked it away. The necessary information from my side um, to qualify for the authentication rule. And we see it's asking for the employer, yeah, that, that was defined in the rule, and for my user ID to um, identify me in the system. Um, yeah, if I would have uh, multiple credentials, I can select the right one here, but in that case, um, it's uh, simple and I can um, send it here. And it's also asking me of if I want to answer proof requests automatically. And um, I do not want to do that right now. Um, now we see the um, authorization page. Um, oh, sorry, Christopher is showing something. Okay, he's showing in the history. Yeah, just to, to uh, show you that every revealed attribute can be viewed after sending the proof request. Ah. Okay, okay. So I um, will see what I have done in the past term um, whenever I revealed some of the attributes. Um, now we are um, authenticated, but the application is asking us um, if we want to provide um, further uh, claims. So uh, I could simply click on login right now and would be in the system, but uh, we know I am the sales manager and I could qualify for the Jira sales rule. So um, I will say, uh, yeah, I want to provide that information in addition, request additional proof. And um, on the app, we should see, see a new request. I'm going to show the request and it's asking me uh, to provide information with my position and I'm clicking on send. And that should um, lead then to a, um, yeah, to the welcome screen of Jira. Um, yeah, I will continue just to show you that the um, entitlements are um, also already synced into the system. Um, ah, okay, our license limit is reached, uh, but maybe I am also, I'm, yeah, I'm able to see the groups that have been synch um, synchronized in the background. So as expected, we have the Jira out group and the Jira sales authorization element. Yeah. Um, the same um, can be done um, for native SSI uh, connectivity. So for example, our um, demo application um, can also be accessed over that way. So I will um, scan that login page and um, it's also configured to um, simply ask for the employer and my user ID. So I will click on send right here. And um, yeah, this is also the um, authorization screen as we have seen it before. And um, now our backend application knows, okay, you are already uh, qualified for the Jira sales um, object and that claim is valid for um, 40 hours. After that 40 hours, I would get a prolongation request in my wallet app so that I can um, yeah, prolong um, um, prolong that. And um, yeah, if I also want to provide further um, information, I could do that, but um, the relevant rules are already checked. Um, I can look if there are all, uh, rules for other applications that might be interesting for me. Um, but uh, as you can see here, there's nothing that I would be able to provide right now. So now I'm simply clicking on login. Um, and um, now I'm in the system and uh, yeah, we, we only got a um, authentication entitlement. So no authorization objects have been issued. So I'm not able to see any of the menus and I'm not able to do any, any action here. Yeah, so um, that is um, most of that what I wanted to show to you. Um, and um, yeah, for those of you that want to try it um, on their own, um, the wallet app is available in the app stores and you can um, go on our wallet um, demo um, and there you can follow the instructions to 
create a DRD connection, accept a DRD connection, get your SSI credentials and prove them as well. Yeah. Yeah, just as a short notice, um, some of the features you saw in the Vault application are not available in the version right now in the stores, but uh, there will become there will be an update uh, in the next few days. Right. Um, okay, so we can switch back to the application. We have uh, two slides left. Um, um, yeah, we have the demonstration. Just give you, uh, to give you some, some more um, insights about the architecture. So uh, I already mentioned we, are, uh, we have um, microservices and all is dockerized. And um, yeah, we have one core component that you can see in the middle. Um, that core component is talking to all of our um, infrastructure services in the background. So for example, for the persistence uh, within a uh, Neo4j database or for the audit trail um, in Elasticsearch. And it provides the um, public REST API for SSI native um, application access. And um, yeah. The core component communicates directly to our um, to our Evis gateway. That is a .NET component, um, and um, that Evis gateway is the only component that is directly talking um, um, to Sovereign or um, yeah to the ledger that you have configured um, in the app. And um, yeah, um, um, what's also interesting to see maybe um, yeah we we um, um, yeah, um, have the um, standardization um, in focus. So um, you will not only be able to use the um, Isatus wallet app, um, you um, should also be able to use any other areas compliant wallet app and of course the uh, Lissy wallet app as well. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, um, there are more um, optional components, for example, the authorization component that is our um, identity provider. Um, this um, needs to be set up for um, OpenID Connect, OR2, and SAML. And um, yeah, we have a set of um, authorization source connectors as well, um, just like this one um, shown on that picture. And yeah, in the next um, months, we will um, continue working um, on especially those connectors um, yeah, to, to integrate even more. So for, um, for example, one of the next steps will be a um, standard JDBC connector to um, uh, synchronize um, entitlements directly into any kind of database um, that has been uh, requested from our site. Yeah, um, yeah um, one last slide. We have also a book recommendation. Um, click here to kill everybody, uh, security and survival in a hyper-connected world. Um, it's written by the uh, security expert Bruce Schneier. It's from last year. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, thank you, Christopher. That's, uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, it's definitely worth reading. Um, it's about security risk in a hyper-connected world and um, illustrates identity thefts and other consequences of um, insecure um, IoT devices. And um, yeah, really gives you some, some, um, some points um, um, to talk about why everyone should uh, focus on, on new technologies like self-sovereign identity. Um, yeah, um, we want to thank you very much um, for attending to our webinar session. Um, if you have any open questions now, uh, please feel free to ask um, or get in touch with us. Um, thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, um, Sebastian. Um, we have a um, couple of questions here already. Uh, while I'm starting with Michelle first, who's asking, what is your business model with your SSI digital web wallet app? How do you plan on generating revenue from this? Who pays for network fees? So for the part of the uh, wallet app? Um, uh, the business sorry. model, we have no directly business model for the wallet application. Yeah. Uh, all the uh, we'll model is, is uh, self. Only uh, the, the application for the enterprise, the vault application should be free to use in our opinion. Yeah, we will, um, will stay free. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, yeah, we don't want to make money on that. And it will be free of ads as well. 
and um, yeah, uh, just the uh, self application. We are currently um, doing um, three first productive installations with our customers, and um, we are um, yeah in a fi uh, phase of um, finding the right way of licensing it. So um, we are focusing on a um, um, yeah pay per use model. Yeah, so for example, um, on um, transaction basis. But it's not um, finally um, finally decided yet um, what this will be. Yeah. Okay. And on on who pays for network fees? Um, network fees um, will be uh, paid from the um, from the agent provider. So uh, we expect that um, um, the uh, company that is hosting um, the self installation uh, with self as a cloud agent. Um, will then act as the uh, transaction endorser yep. and um, will um, yeah uh, needs to pay for the um, fees just about a schema credential definition and the revocation list updates yeah. and the push notification service and uh, the routing service for the messages from from this agent to the wallet application as a service from us. Okay, awesome. So, um, so Michelle is also asking, what are the efforts required to change a username, password, authentication to passwordless identification through your app? Can we bridge from your SSI app to our, authentic to our authentication platform without us changing anything on our end? Uh, yes, it's um, simply about configuration. So, um, if um, uh, typically, um, typically our customers want to um, install their own self application in the house yeah? um, that could be cloud hosted or um, on prem, but um, they need the self application and then it's simply configuring um, in the um, in the target system. So as we saw today in the Jira system, um, mm -hmm. we have um, a lot of options um, uh, what to configure. So for example, over um, SAML for authentication, but you could use um, OpenID, Connect, or other options. Um, as well, and we have a um, compatibility um, matrix um, available um, on the net. So there you can check um, a lot of uh, common cloud applications and um, which um, um, which um, interfaces they support, and what should be um, uh, working out of the box with self. And that is uh, quite a lot um, because we really focused on um, integrating the most used um, interfaces up front. Wonderful. Um, we have um, Peter is asking, um, how are your employees using this application for the time being? Um, how do you train your employees to understand what a proof request is or what a claim is? That's a really, um, really good question. Um, we really um, want to keep the um, the knowledge about it really simple. Um, we, um, uh, yeah, had our rollout two or three weeks now ago, yeah. and um, uh, yeah, we told our um, HR manager um, some of the basics, and um, yeah, simply uh, watched how it worked out, yeah? and. Um, uh, what the user needs to know, yeah, he needs to get that credential. Um, he needs to know how uh, to scan in the application, and yeah, as well, he needs to know what happens if he loses his um, um, his device. Um, how can he make backups um, and so on? That is um, very important. But um, yeah, um, we did not do um, a um, deeper um, dive into. Um, um, vocabulary of the whole um, of the whole technology, yeah. and that is working well. We um, with uh, nearly 50 uh, employees, they are using it today, um, 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 and um, yeah, we have um, uh, not much complaints about it, and um, it's working re really well. We have some improvements in the app um, uh, um, to get it um, to work more comfortably. Um, so, for example, what you saw, um, the, um, the um, handling of new um, proof requests so that they open directly in the middle of the screen so that the, the user um, directly knows what to do, um, that were some of the improvements that um, uh, needed to be done. And also the, the auto answering feature, uh, which 
many of the employees which uh, use our test application, which is not uh, available at the stores right now, uh, they use it a lot. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, to, to two final question, questions just for myself. Um, um, one um, is about, I mean, I understand, I mean, right now you're running on Sovereign, um, uh, on the mainnet, I understand, on also on some other ledgers, um, like test ledgers. Um, I understand that this is basically um, um, compatible or easily compatible with or interoperable with any other Hyperledger, indie based ledger, or is it, or have you set it up in such a way that it's easy be easily interoperable with any type of ledger? Uh, just for right now with indie ledgers. Yes. So um, as you saw in the, uh, the change ledger functionality, we have a. Uh, oh, it's not visible right now. We simply have to minimize it. And it should be available here yeah. on the right hand side. Um, this is the the. Um, um, default list of ledgers we bring um, with the app where we also have the um, Genesis files all, um, already included in the wallet app. But um, if you want to um, include more um, Hyperledger indie based ledgers, uh, simply click on plus, uh, enter a name, select the Genesis file, and you are good to go. And the same for uh, the self agent, you can simply uh, say which ledger you want to connect at startup of the agent and uh, the agent will connect to every hyperledger in the implementation. Awesome. Um, um, just last question for me, if anyone else has any question, please um, bring it up now, uh, if, if you're interested. Um, um, what, what is your, oh, just one more coming in. Oh, let me ask, um, yeah, okay. I'll answer to that now. Um, what is your view on 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 what the interest is in, in Germany and in SSI? I mean, how dynamic is the SSI there, and um, who's showing interest, or how is the ecosystem in Germany? Yeah, so um, we are um, really much talking um, in our typically um, customer um, area. So is this in the um, financial services industry, and they are um, really interested to just what. Wait for Christopher Sturin, yeah. yeah, so um, just like you can hear, uh, see on that page um, of, of the uh, LISI project that are typical examples of um, companies um, already interested in that topic. And um, yeah, they see um, um, the large need of um, trust in the internet, um, especially when it comes to interoperability. Um, we are um, not um, fully covering the topic now. Um, when it comes to KYC processes and so on, or um, um, digital signature um, um, laws by the European Union. But um, we are um, on the path uh, um, to that. And um, yeah, um, that is, uh, yeah. But uh, we have also other um, um, large companies that are simply interested in um, um, new modern technology and um, also see the, um, um, the benefits of um, um, letting third-party resources, um, um, uh, letting a user come with a trustable uh, third-party credentials and uh, to provide them use cases that they were not able to do before. Awesome, thank you so much. So um, just two last comments so you can hear them here, like um, one from Alfonso from Mexico, he's saying great presentation, thank you so much. And, and then we have a comment from Michelle. He's asking, can I watch this back? Yes, you will be able to watch this. Um, I, I hope you will be able to upload it in the next 12 hours. And uh, it will be on the same landing page where you registered for this webinar. And um, we will also be sharing this um, in social media. So um, yeah, you will have the video and, and the slide deck available. Um, I think there are no other questions. Um, any final comments from you, um, Sebastian and Christopher, that you would like to share? Oh, sorry. I have one more question coming in here. Um, okay. Max, Max is asking, what is the most use, used use case you have seen so far? Um, so, um, yeah, with self, we are um, in the um, authorization authentication sector. Yeah? So, so our typical use cases are really um, um, integrating IT applications so that employees or externals um, can use these uh, IT applications with uh, SSI credentials. That is our uh, common use case in our sector. And um, yeah, um, so it's starting with uh, typically logical access, yeah? so access to IT applications, but we also have some 
some um, POCs about uh, physical access. So for example, open the door um, with your uh, SSI credentials as well. Yeah. Or um, one other um, good topic would be um, password reset functionality. So for example, um, as an alternative uh, way of um, getting your password back, uh, you can provide um, the agent with your uh, credential and you will get a screen to reset your password. That's also um, something, um, yeah, uh, yeah, we are dealing with. Okay, awesome. So um, unless there's something else coming in, any final thoughts from you, something that you would like to share with, with, for the audience or for the people that will watch the video or are you good? So far? So far so good, yeah. So um, thank you um, all very much for attending. Okay. Fantastic. So thank you um, so much, um, Sebastian and Christopher, for making time and for sharing the progress of, of what you're making uh, for the time being with self and Isatus in Germany. Um, for everyone else, um, we will have in almost exactly 12 hours um, our next session coming up, which will be with John Phillips from um, 460 Degrees in Australia. And um, John and his team, they did a really great video about um, how to explain SSI um, really easy and I uh, really like the video they did and they will be sharing tomorrow the whole thinking behind this, how they have created a slide deck about how to explain SSI to, we, we, we're calling the session for C-suite executives but it's really basically for everyone because as you know SSI uh, for the time being is still a very um, nerdy um, complex subject to explain and I think as, as these kind of solutions as self and other solutions come up people will be able to understand much better how this stuff works. So um, please join us on that tomorrow. We will distribute um, um, all this material that we did right now with Christopher and Sebastian um, in social media, where you will, you will be able to rewatch the video if you want to uh, on the landing page and just join our newsletter, our Telegram channel, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those things. Um, yes, and Michelle is asking me, can you confirm that the next meetup is at 4 a.m. in the morning Eastern time? Yes, that's correct. And, and it's really, very, very early for the North American based friends because um, we're doing it um, in the late afternoon in Australia, which is the early morning here in Europe. But you will be able to watch it um, online uh, or if you're feeling like getting up really early, then <laughs> please get up early. Usually we do these uh, meetups all the time um, in the evening in the European time. But since um, John and his team are based in Australia, Tomorrow we're doing it exceptionally in the, in, the, in the early morning here in Europe and that's the late evening over there in Australia. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Sebastian and Christopher. Um, everyone, if you can join us tomorrow, join us tomorrow. If not, you can watch all these webinars online and hopefully you will share this around in the world. Thank you so much, everyone.